news for jobs and bad news for mortgages. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at an article written by Tarek Brooker in news.com.au in which he's discussing what would be good news for job seekers but could be bad news for mortgage holders and the potential for a future rate hikes. But before we go through that, I want to talk about, well, the government coming to the rescue, everyone. And <laughs> there's been a lot of intervention in the market. You've got companies trading while insolvent. This is the one that I always start off with because it scares me the most as a small business owner. Nothing is worse than doing a whole lot of work for someone, giving them credit and not getting paid. You know, that that's pretty tough. So we can see right now company external ent entering external administration. It's about half of where it should be. Personal insolvencies are also quite low. And well, government's letting, they let, changed the rules last year. So we're going to have, even if insolvencies return to normal levels and they've started to creep up, we're going to uh, see higher numbers. JobKeeper, nearly 9% of the Victorian, or people employed in Victoria, was supported by JobKeeper. We can see in the other states too, guys. This this is a huge numbers, huge intervention. I suspect it was to avoid a strain on Centrelink more than anything, you know, and to at least maintain that relationship. There were a lot of businesses that didn't need it. That's the dead weight loss that we had to pay to keep those relationships going. That that's the price we we had to pay. I'd I'd rather maybe you got to remember all of this was for lockdowns. Essentially, what it was to restrict the economy to mitigate the virus. There's not even a discussion of whether the, the price we're paying for all of this is worth it. Maybe there could have been other strategies that were used. But, you know, it's the damage is done now. It's too late. They've been juicing the market. The cash rate is very low, and that's what we're going to talk about today. 0.1%. 3% used to be an emergency. Home builder has proven very successful and is stimulating and juicing the housing market. You had first home buyer grants up to 88 grand when you combined it all together. 5% government loans, no mortgage insurance. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> then, you know, super withdrawals as well and negative gearing long term has shifted us to a culture of just investing in housing, a way to mitigate your tax. Australia's the third highest. We've got the third highest tax burden of all the OECD countries. We can be proud of that. And well, how do we how do we mitigate that? Go into property. She'll be right, mate. We've got housing supply as well has been reduced. And a lot of that is just to do with council regulations and issues. I find it funny, the Tweed Council crying poor, saying we need help for housing affordability. But I can't imagine they've done anything to really make it easier for people to build low cost housing. When's the last time they cut their headworks fees? You've got mortgage holidays, which reduced the amount of property that had to go into the market and just the general uncertainty out there where people have been saving like crazy. So let's have a oh and well, this is the price we've had to pay. Just keep that in mind, guys. $1.3 trillion at a national and federal level, uh, federal and state level for our debt. So let's look at this article that Tarek has written. So good news for job seekers could cause problems for the housing market and mortgage holders. Well, you know what they'll do. They'll bring in Mortgage Keeper TM. I, I need to make that into a N, what, an NTF, a non-fungible token, and then charge the government a rate to use it. While jobs and growth is good for some, the swift recovery of the Aussie job market could be a catastrophe for anyone with a mortgage. Okay. When the Reserve Bank joined the Federal Reserve and other central banks in slashing interest rates to the lowest level in history on March 2020, it turned the world of asset prices and finances quite literally upside down. All of a sudden, bad news became good news for asset prices as it ensured further central bank and government intervention to prop them up. The Australian housing market was no exception. As the images of unemployment lines weaved around, weaving around the block reached our screens, measures of support were put together by the RBA and Morrison government, which prevented the worst from happening to the property market. Well, also we had the RBA predicting a 40% decline in property values. We had every bank left, right and center de de depicting declines. We had all these unnatural interventions in the market. Who, who would have anticipated a mortgage holiday? When you're, when you're looking at getting a mortgage, you're thinking, oh, you know what? If there's a big disaster, I don't need to worry about it. I'll just get a mortgage holiday. She'll be right. Has the precedent now been set? Are people going to expect that? 
then will that be priced into everything? So <laughs> everything will get more expensive. Nothing's free. It never is. Just like that, bad news became good news for property prices, although it wasn't immediately clear to the vast majority of analysts and commentators at the time. But now as the labor market improves and truckloads of stimulus does its job supporting the economic recovery, risks are, are, are ironically beginning to emerge. How does employment impact housing prices? In a world where bad news was good news for the property market, too much good news for the economy could be bad news for a roaring housing market. In recent months, the Aussie labor market has consistently shocked analysts and economic commentators with the rapid pace of its recovery. In October's federal budget, Treasury forecast that the unemployment rate would be sitting at around 5.5% in the 2023 to 24 financial year. Yet just five months after that forecast was made, the nation's unemployment rate sits at 5.6%, just 0.5% above its pre-COVID level. Although the conclusion of JobKeeper and the end of, of hundreds of billions in government stimulus is yet to be felt, the recovery in the official ABS figures has been impressive to say the least. There you go. You can see unemployment crashing down to 5.6%. So what happens if interest rates go up? If unemployment were, were to continue to fall at the same rate as in the most recent ABS labor force report, by mid-year, it would sit at just 5%. If the trend were to continue till the end of the year, it would sit at around the level consistent with pressure beginning to build on the RBA to raise interest rates. Under normal circumstances, this would not only be great news for the economy, but a cause for celebration for a majority of Australians. However, with interest rates at record lows, the inflatory pressures that could result from a strong labour market may prove quite a different story for the nation's highly leveraged mortgage holders. After more than a decade without the RBA raising interest rates, Australians have become accustomed to rates only going one way, down. Well, yeah, that's. I still remember reading stuff where 3% was considered an emergency rate. But will they be able to raise it? Will they will it even ever be possible again to raise rates? Will there be just calls for more intervention in the market, guys? Will we have mortgage keeper then? Forecasts from RBA Governor Philip Lowe that rates won't rise for at least three years has also provided a sense of security for the nation's borrowers, which may provide more short-lived than intended. Well, if you're concerned with a potential rate rise in the next three years, you lock in a four-year rate. And then take those four years to prepare yourself. If you start seeing them going up outside of your, your interest rate, then you, you take steps to prepare. I mean, that's what, <laughs> that's what I did. I don't trust them. Do you? The sooner than anticipated upward pressure on global interest rates has already caused the Bank of Canada into, re into a rethink of its own interest rate hike timeline. Late last year, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff... Uh, Macklem stated that the Bank of Canada was planning on keeping interest rates at their current near zero level until 2023. This statement was very similar to those of our reserve uh, of our own RBA, which has repeatedly stated that rates would not rise for three years. Yet, despite the Bank of Canada's previous viewpoint, a stronger than expected recovery now has them eyeing a rate hike as soon as the second half of next year, as little as 15 months from now. In these highly uncertain and fast-moving environment, the predictions of central banks not to raise interest rates may provide to be just that, words. Words that may have little concrete meaning when tested by a set of circumstances that central banks like the Bank of Canada and RBA were not expecting. A 30% rise in house prices. According to research from the RBA, the cash rate being cut by 1% would result in a 30% rise in real house prices over a three-year period. While the impact of the 2019-2020 rate cuts is arguably yet to have been completely priced into the housing market, with the RBA cash rate at an all-time low of 0.1%, there is no more ammunition left with which to support housing prices in the future. After 51 RBA rate cuts over the past 31 years, there is a growing consensus among economists that the only way for interest rates to go is up. Oh, we, we might enter the club of negative rates. I can't, I can't see negative rates appearing in Australia, at least not while Lowe is in charge of the RBA. This raises a very uncomfortable question for many 
Aussie mortgage holders, particularly those who have who have stretched their budgets to get into the market recently. What if the RBA raises rates sooner? If rate heights do come earlier than RBA Governor Philip Lowe predicted, a further downside scenario is raised. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The hardest part of getting into a house is the deposit. Right now, it's, it's the deposit. Most houses in Australia, you can actually buy, uh, pay the mortgage cheaper than you would to rent the damn thing. And how many people, what, 60% of first-home buyers at the moment are getting financial support to get that deposit. So it may actually be easier for them, once they've, they're in their own house, to save. They may be saving money now, that even if interest rates start creeping up, they may be in a better position. Because, well, what if they're not paying rent and they're not straight saving for a deposit? So how much extra extra buffer and capacity does that give you? And the whole the old argument of 30% disposable income to do with housing affordability. And we'll bring this one up here. It shows you... Uh, see, I'm, I'm getting quite skeptical of that because I think that's from previous history. You know, times when people could afford stuff. How many people... Or maybe, maybe that's the issue. They haven't been able to afford a, to save a deposit. Or maybe they've only needed part of a deposit because housing is so insane. But we see here housing affordability is at the point where 30% or less of household disposable income, you've only got certain parts of Brisbane and Perth that are affordable. Very little is in the rest of the country. And this was in the middle of last year. So if anything, it's gotten worse. Now, if... If we start seeing rates going up and you've got all these people that have jumped in, are they going to fall over or are they going to have at least a bit of breathing room? If a 1% cut in the cash rate results in a 30% rise in real house prices over three years, what would a 1% rise in the cash rate do to property prices? As the impact of the Morrison government's various stimulus programs and JobKeeper begins to fade, we may see the rapid labor market recovery stall or even reverse, particularly if the global economy falters once more. If the labor market manages to shrug off these headwinds and recover at a rapid rate, we may see the lucky country dog the worst yet of another global economic crisis. Ultimately, if Australia does see a permanent shift towards more inf inflatory future defined by multiple interest rate hikes, it may ironically leave some highly leveraged mortgage holders pining for the days of interest rates at emergency lows and a stagnant economy. Well, he's right there. There is the risk that some people are leveraged too high. But let's have a look at the RBA's perspective. So here's the thing. The RBA will not raise rates to slow the housing boom. Uh, this is from an ABC article. Mr. Lowe reiterated that the RBA does not and would not explicitly target house prices with its interest rate policy. Instead, he said it was up to the government and financial regulators to address community concerns such as soaring housing costs. He's only worried about jobs and wages. That's all his perspective is. We have a look at some of the latest data from the RBA. Now, household liquidity buffers. How much money does, do people have set aside? Indebted homeowners have four months. So if you're an indebted homeowner, you're doing better than a renter, everyone. Outright owners have 10 months of liquidity. You've got people that have got up to 24 months of repayments. Look at the owner-occupier rate. How many there? A, a prepaid 24 months. You know. You've got housing in houses in negative equity. That's gone down because property has gone up. Now, if property goes down in value, that may creep up. And I mean, uh, you can look here at the loan to value ratios of the totally owner occupiers versus to investors and the interest only share. I mean, there was concerns that there'd be, remember when interest only was going to run out and then they're, they're, all these properties would flood the market if it didn't happen. So the solutions and lessons. Well, given what has happened, what are the chances of government intervening again? That's, that's the question I will put to you, you know to support the housing sector or mortgage holders. Mortgage Keeper is a joke that I have made, but could it turn into reality? I mean, should we be worried if we, we're seeing how much people have, have got ahead, how much liquidity indebted homeowners have, and this talk, even if interest rates start going up, how many people have locked in their mortgage just to prepare for that? So we'll have to see.
Is it worth, you know, waiting? Here's the thing. If you are uh, uh, toying with the idea of getting in the housing market, should you wait for the potential of this to, to dent the price of property? It, it's the, it's the, old, the old trick of trying to time the market rather than time in the market. Is housing that different from shares? So I did a viewer poll, everyone, and I'd like you please to, to let us know your opinion on this. I just did it, well, 18 minutes ago as I started this recording, and I asked, are you worried about the future uh, about future interest rate hikes in the next few years? So here is the poll, uh, well, sometime after I started recording this video, so I, this is Florian from the future jumping back. Now, of the 314 people that have voted, 19% said yes. I'm at the limit of my ability to pay my mortgage. And the question was, are you worried about future interest rate hikes in the next few years? 11% said yes, I am, but I've bought with a hike in mind. 30% said no, I've paid ahead or have enough earnings. And 40% said no, I don't think we will see a rate hike for years. And let's have a look at some of the comments that people have, have left. Jason saying, We've got to break free from the matrix that's keeping us all trapped here. I think a lot of people like the current situation. Just, well, look at Berkshire Hathaway's, um, Warren Buffett's comments regarding their attempts to try and transform the American health system, which I thought was quite interesting. A lot of people happy to sit on the boards and happy for them to have to spend 17% of their GDP on it. RC, no chance of a rate increase. Deflationary bust is coming soon. Carmen said, I had a mortgage in the 80s when interest was 17% and we managed. I, I have, I'm now mortgage free for 40 years, small home, humble and happy, doesn't even have a car. She feels liberated. I, I like that comment. <laughs> uh, Vijo, I don't care because the interest rates have to go up or otherwise the current system will be totally stuffed because the inflation is running around 6 to 8%, which is madness. Uh, the longer these fools politicians keep playing this game, the harder it will be to get out of this crap. Craig says the sooner the better. Andrew goes, 10-year bonds just broke out of the triangle on Friday. Interest rates are going up. Don't kid yourself, people. Way no paid cash outright. No debt and no credit cards. Andrew, with the, with the way the tyrants are acting in government, interest rates are the least of my concerns. Uh, and uh, B. Tiger said, you don't ask why the people own their house outright. My response to that was, well, they won't have a mortgage then. If you own a house outright, you don't need to worry about interest rates. Almost uh, lazy is going too late for that question. Uh, yeah, not really, mate. Uh, and Chris is going, I have no debt. So again, they're the results. 19% said, uh, yes, they're worried, but they have the ability, they're at the limit to pay. 11% have bought with that in mind. 30% have paid ahead, so they're not worried. And 40% don't think there'll be a rate hike for years. So and I'll jump you back to that previous Florian. Thank you. What do you reckon, everyone? Do you think we're going to see, we're going to see some debt? Should we be worried about a rate hike? Or should people be trying to time the market based on this type of stuff? Let us know your vote and your opinion down below and vote in the poll. Thanks everyone for watching. If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can help us with our share purchases by signing up to Self Wealth or Stake. You can use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can help us by buying our merch. We make pocket squares in this very own house here. You can also help us out by PayPal or good old Gold Pass from the Perth Mint. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.